Welcome to Marble Machine 3, episode 4. In August 2023, I'm going to the Wintergarten meetup at Siegfried's Mechanical Music Museum in Rudesheim, Germany. During that summer week, I plan to assemble the power input module for the Marble Machine 3, so now I really need to finalize the design so I can order all the parts in good time to have everything ready for assembly in August. Both the original Marble Machine and the Marble Machine X are already located in Rudesheim, so it feels really cool to build the third and hopefully much better Marble Machine 3 at this very beautiful location. The first finished design is the flywheel. In earlier videos I discussed different ways of mounting a bearing and the strongest type of feedback I received on the reddit page was to use proven solutions wherever possible. So instead of mounting the bearings directly to the flywheel I have now redesigned the whole module and moved the bearings out to the sides using these standard pillow block bearings. Even though I'm sure my bearing design would work flawlessly, I should absolutely use proven designs if I can. The pillow blocks are tried and tested, it's proven design building on years of mechanical traditions. So the great point that many of you made in your feedback that I should try to develop the reflex to always go for the tested safe option when it exists and when it makes sense. So I did exactly that. Let's have a look at exactly how the module is designed. We start with a 20 millimeter diameter axe. Axle. Then a pulley in three different sizes so we can experiment with flywheel speed. Then a laser cut spacer disc and a laser cut shaft clamp. I added the spacer disc as a safety measure to create some more space around the transmission belt. Probably we don't need this but we do not want the belt to be brushing or touching anything else but the pulley so better safe than sorry. Then we have the first weight disc of the flywheel. In total we have six discs. The discs are removable so we can change the weight of the flywheel by using fewer than six discs. This gives us two options to change the flywheel characteristics. We can change the speed with the different pulleys and the weight with a different number of weight discs. The idea is to experiment to find a perfect setting during testing and then leave that setting on forever. So the design the whole sandwich not. off with another laser cut shaft clamp and then add four threaded rods with nuts to clamp the whole sandwich together. These bolts need to be tightened in a specific order and a little bit at a time to make the design work so that the clamp bolt doesn't hinder the clamping force of the through bolts etc. Then we add these pillow block bearing housings and an extra shaft clamp on the outside probably not needed but better safe than sorry when it comes to flywheels. Under the pillow block bearings I'm adding the belt tensioning system. It's laser cut parts that turns into a kind of a sled for the pillow blocks and then we can put the whole module on to our welded square tubing frame. There is a laser cut slot in the square tubing that allows for the belt tensioning by moving the entire flywheel module back and forth and the threaded rod goes through the side of the square tubing frame and by turning these nuts here we can adjust the belt tension very precisely and easily. Once we have the correct belt tension we can clamp the module securely to the frame by tightening these chunky M10 bolts and the flywheel is installed. Let's look on some closer details of the design. First of all concentricity versus balancing. Many of you pointed out after the last video that concentricity is not the key point for a flywheel and that it is rather balancing of the wheel that should be the focus. And I always plan to balance the wheel after assembly. I had some comments about that in my previous video that I edited out to make the video shorter, which I probably should never do because it's always the parts that I edit out that you feedback on the most. <laughs> However, when you balance a wheel, you make sure that the weight is perfectly distributed around the wheel. An unbalanced wheel causes vibrations and premature failures of components. So just making sure the parts are concentric will not be enough. To achieve balance you can for example drill out material from the heavy parts of the wheel or add the material on light parts of the wheel. And there are also professional services that balances the wheels for you with sensitive measurement equipment. So while concentricity is not totally replacing the need of balancing, it is still much better to start from a somewhat concentric starting point and to achieve an okay concentricity for these laser cut parts, I am planning to use reaming. So I'm cutting the center hole undersized, 19.9 millimeter in diameter. 
So I'm leaving half a millimeter of metal around the circle. And then I'm going to ream the laser cut hole to 20 millimeter size, and that will leave a somewhat good finish. There's one issue with this that makes me somewhat apprehensive. Laser cut surfaces are often heat hardened, which makes them tougher to post process. Lucas says he has been reaming laser cut holes for the MMX with good results, so hopefully we can make it work. It's still good to remind ourselves that laser cut surfaces are a little bit tougher to cut than clean steel surfaces. A reamer is a beautiful tool designed to widen the diameter of an existing hole to a very precise diameter and nice finish. There are many different forms of reamers and I think we are going to use hand reamers. The reason for this is that the hand reamer will follow the existing hole, meaning we do not have to indicate our parts perfectly on the machine and use a milling machine to ream these holes. By reaming all the center holes, we should have a pretty nice fit between the laser cut steel plate and the 20 millimeter axle. It will not be as nice as a perfectly machined fit, but we absolutely do not need that kind of perfection for this application. Remember that the worst enemy to a good plan is a perfect plan. Let's talk about the pulleys. We are officially looking for our first Marble Machine 3 collaboration and we're looking for someone who can lathe these three pulleys and send them to Rudisheim. I have made a 3D printed prototype of the smallest pulley here so you can see the scale is pretty small. When I designed the pulley in the first place I couldn't find the perfect profile for the pulley so I kind of guesstimate the design. But then Lucas Vandel from Siegfried Museum rescued me by finding the ISO standard for the PK pulley profile. So now I have a better design following the official measurements and I really felt like an engineer reading all these tables and designing from them. And I also tried to make some technical drawings for the machinist who wants to machine this for us. It's far from a perfect drawing as this is the first one I ever did, but it does have some tolerances and stuff and it should really be enough for a high performing part for our application. For upcoming parts, I think I'm gonna lean a little bit into drawing design and learn more about how to do that. If you are interested to make these parts for the Marble Machine 3, please follow the link in the top pinned comments and in the description of the videos and fill in your interest. And this time we are only collaborating with people from Europe. Last time during the MMX I spent so much import tax on parts from the US, so the closer to Germany you are the better. Okay, here's the top Reddit feedback from the last episode that we all can learn from. Number one, never use ChatGPT for math, use Wolfram Alpha instead. Good idea. Number two, balance the wheel is more important than making it concentric. And I want to say huge thanks to everyone for leaving constructive feedback. As you can see, I've already incorporated and made my design better thanks to your feedback and thanks to everyone that upvoted other feedbacks. While the progress right now seems a little bit slow, it's partly because I've had a kind of a lot of other things that I needed to take care of. It's also because I'm kind of not building like a specific Lego car. I'm actually designing the Lego pieces themselves. I'm developing a design language for my entire machine. So when I'm looking at the flywheel, I'm not only thinking about the flywheel, I'm thinking about all the 20 wheels that will rotate on the full Marble Machine 3. So I'm going slow. I've learned that preparation is key for good engineering, but from now I really need to speed up and deliver some nice designs in order to assemble and test this prototype in Germany in August. It's going to be so much fun to be welding again. So yeah, I really need to speed up and hopefully I can do that over the upcoming weeks. And by the way, if you want to come by and say hi in Rudisheim and hang out with parts of the Wintergatter community and also see me assembling the power input module, there are still some day tickets left to the summer event. I am not organizing this event. It is organized solely by members of the Wintergatter community in collaboration with Siegfried's Museum. So for any questions regarding this event, I refer you to the organizers. Find all the details at Wintergatter community. Have a great time everyone, thank you for watching and see you next time.